Almost all good image models have over 10 billion parameters nowadays, with the new Flux 2 at a whopping 32 billion. So it's genuinely a surprise to see a new image model drop with only 6 billion parameters that can pump out these types of images. The model is also uncensored. It is seriously impressive on prompt adherence, output quality, and speed. I'll show you how to set it up and make it run fast, even on 8 gig VRAM machines. Let's get into it. So Z image is created by Alibaba and it focuses on photorealistic images. On their main blog page, you can see a lot of photorealistic samples that they have. And another thing they claim they do well is this world context. So it knows locations around the world and how to create images for those as well. Okay, now to get the models. The official BF16 version of the Z image model is not that big. It's only at 12 gigs. But I found that when I run it on 8 gigs of uh, VRAM, that Comfy UI would cut over to my system memory and it would make the generations a little bit longer. It's still not long compared to some of the other new models like Flux 2, but it is significantly longer than the GIGOFs uh, that I ended up using. So if you have a bit more RAM, you can test it out with the BF16 12 gig uh, model if you want. But for this video and for all of my generations, I tend to use the Q8 GIGOF version, which is only 7 gigs. And this one fits completely in the VRAM when it's doing generation. So my iteration time goes down from about 12 to 15 seconds to around 4 seconds with the Q8 Giga. There's also a smaller FP8 model that's there, but usually with the choice of FP8 or Q8, I usually go with the Q8 Giga instead. So after you get the diffusion model, you need two more files. Uh, the first is a text encoder, the Quen3 4 billion parameter one. So you just get that from the Comfy UI link, and then the VAE also from the Comfy UI link. And then that's pretty much it. Once you're back into Comfy UI, just make sure you have it updated to the latest version. So from within Comfy UI, you can go to Manager, click on the Update All, and make sure everything gets installed. Once you do your restart, you can double check to see if you have it by going into Templates and seeing if you have the Z Image Turbo Text to Image workflow here. So you can use this template or you can download the one that I've shared because that one uses the GGuff inside already. Once you open it up, you'll see that Comfy UI has made the whole thing more simplified by turning this whole chunk here into a subgraph, and it's made up of a bunch of different components inside that you're usually used to. So in order to see that, you can click on this uh, icon, and then you'll see all the individual nodes underneath that make up that simplified um, interface that's, that we saw before. This is also where I made the change to add the GGuff. So just quickly going through kind of the flow around this, it's pretty simple. I've replaced the diffusion model loader with the GGuff unit loader. Uh, also put in the Turbo Q8 in here. The load clip, just make sure you have the, the Quen3 4 billion in here. You can either use CPU as a device or change it to default. And then just make sure you have the Lumina 2 uh, selected here. The VAE is pretty standard. And then you set your image size um, node here. And then the image size is set using the node uh, empty SD3 latent image. Because it's using CFG1, there's only one positive prompt, and then you don't need a negative prompt. So they only have one positive prompt, and then a zero out for the negative. The K sampler is also pretty much the basic one. So the model connects in, positive prompt and negative prompts get connected in, and then your empty latent size uh, gets connected in here as well. And then it's the usual K sampler settings. So you have your seed, uh, how you want it to change after you generate. So you can change this to randomize again. Steps. I recommend at least eight steps for uh, Z image. I think six is slightly underbaked, um, but eight is pretty good uh, for speed and for quality. And then if you really want to bump up the quality a little, you can change it to 10 steps. CFG, you leave at one. I left the uh, sampler and scheduler as the default. Uh, so res, multi-step, and simple. I haven't played around with some of the other samplers, um, but you can try them out and see if it make a difference. So all of these uh, get turned into that one widget. So if we go back, all of the important parameters that were in purple just now uh, show up here. And this is where you would put all the settings uh, to generate the output. I actually like this style. It's, it's really clean compared to all the different nodes from before. But you still have access to all the settings that, that you really need. So for these samples, I've been using 1280 by 1280. You can get faster generations, of course, from uh, 1024 by 1024. I've also tried higher resolution, so 20... 48 by 2048, and then some of the widescreen ones like uh, 1650 by 1080, uh, those all work as well. Just note that the higher res you go, the more VRAM you might use. So you might cut over to your system RAM and then make it a little bit slower. 
Um, you don't have to set anything else here since you've already picked it before. But if you want to change anything, you can change the settings uh, directly from here. And then it's really as simple as that. And then you can just start generating. So one of the test images I have up here was just to see how much it knows around that uh, world context. And it's pretty crazy that it already has like celebrities and, and world locations and things built in. There's also little to no censorship uh, from what you can generate, which is crazy compared to some of the other models out there. So for example, this one is just a simple Taylor Swift, you know, performing um, outside in Las Vegas. And it's nailed most of the core components like Taylor Swift. She looks pretty good. And then definitely the background uh, for Las Vegas, the replica Eiffel Tower, and then the other hotel behind it is generally how this would look if someone took a picture like this. There's obviously some smaller details I'm pretty sure aren't correct. But at a quick glance and even just taking a look at the overall composition and just how it looks, it looks fairly believable, which is pretty insane for a 6 billion parameter model that you can run pretty quickly locally. And it doesn't really have any of the issues of old models. Her hands all look pretty good. Um, there's nothing kind of immediately really wrong with the image. Now we can jump to a couple other images that I've been testing with and we can take a look there too. Okay, next I'll go through a couple of other tests that I've tried. This image is to test out some real world references. Obviously it's a Porsche 911, a woman standing there on the Great Wall of China, the cars parked there. Definitely seems to know how to draw out the Great Wall of China. Um, there's a couple of pylons and things here. I'm not sure what they are. I think maybe with a different seed, you may get um, things without these two. And then for the car itself, it looks it looks vaguely like a Porsche 911. I'm sure there's some small details that don't look quite right, um, but the general shape um, seems to be okay. At least the proportions and everything with regards to the, the person is also correct. So for sure, it definitely knows some context around uh, different objects. This next one is to test the cinematic capabilities of the image model. So this one's supposed to be like a movie still of a female Jedi warrior with her lightsaber out uh, walking in the middle of a forest. I'm actually pretty impressed with this. There's some film grain. The lighting is quite good. Uh, the forest looks pretty realistic. And then of course the, the subject itself looks quite realistic. It does know how to render a lightsaber. So it's created one uh, pretty well. There's a couple other things on her belt here that I'm not sure what they are, but for the most part, uh, it looks good. Actually, her face is pretty well done too with the emotion there. This next one's more of a sci-fi shot. This one is another one that other models had problems with in the past. The image is a little bit better, but it's still not quite what I was imagining. So what I really wanted was like a heads up display on a clear visor and a more realistic readout on how the, the image and the UI would be on a helmet. This one definitely renders it with like a curve and everything on the screen and the crosshair targeting. But the text maybe is too crisp or it just looks kind of painted on instead of um, how it would be digitally added onto the visor itself. But this is a lot better than some of the previous models. A lot of the previous ones wouldn't even generate the HUD or it wouldn't generate the crosshair. And it would just make like an opaque visor or a visor with some lighting on it, um, but not quite as detailed as different components and things like this. So this is pretty good. You can also see what Z image is really good at. Like the skin detail and everything else on her face is pretty good. There's very little of that plasticky AI look, and it's definitely much more realistic compared to some of the other models. Okay, this next image is to test out the text capabilities of Z-Image. I want to do something slightly tricky since most image generators can write text now. I want to see if we can put the text behind the subject, like a lot of YouTube thumbnails. So that's what I prompted for. Just uh, the subject of a blacksmith and then the Z-Image text kind of behind her being obscured by her body. And it's done a really good job both with the regular image itself plus the text um, follows my prompt exactly. So you can tell that the text has the image, but then uh, it also makes sense that you can see the A and the G obscured by her body. And then as for the image itself, this is actually a pretty good image. I tried this before on older models and they don't usually come out so well. This time there's a lot of detail in like the leather of her apron and, and gloves and the way she's hitting the metal makes sense. A lot of times before it didn't used to make sense, but most realistically is the, the grime and the sweat that's on her body. With older models, sometimes it was just kind of splotchy and fake looking, but now it looks pretty realistic. So overall a really good job. And then lastly, probably the most basic use case is just a one girl prompt. This one's more of a selfie style uh, with the harsher lighting, a little bit of a wide angle view, and then the other one is more of a, a candid shot just in, the, in a room. Both of them are really well done. It's getting quite hard to tell that some of these are AI generated. There's some variety now in their faces and they definitely don't look plastic. And mimicking like cell phone shots or uh, 
lower quality cameras is also pretty good as well. So Z image definitely lived up to its claims of being photorealistic. It's, it's actually really good at creating um, images with people. And I'm super impressed with the model. I'll definitely be trying it out some more. So hopefully you guys found this useful. If you did, give it a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.